Welcome to the Boat Buyer's Secret Weapon. I am your host, Captain Matt, and today we're talking about how to buy a used center console without getting ripped off. So we're going to go through a lot of stuff. As always, we're brought to you by Boat Buyer's Secret Weapon Toolkit. You can download your free copy of a toolkit uh, that comes with checklists, demo inspection checklists, checklists for the demo to make sure you buy the right boat at the best price. You can get that at BoatBuyersSecretWeapon.com. And today we're going to talk about, is a center console right for you? Options to consider, uh, how to avoid someone else's headache, which is always a topic we cover when we talk about used boats. The number one must-do inspection before buying, financing and insurance tips, and at the end we'll have a special opportunity, a free gift for you for, for sticking with us, uh, probably around 30 minutes or so. So let's start with most of your center consoles are going to be powered by outboards. I would say 98, 99% of them are uh, powered by an outboard power source, especially the newer ones. Now, I am not going to tell you my favorite um, outboard because frankly, that would be an opinion. And everybody that has one, um, has a boat, likely has an opinion about their favorite engine, whether it's a stern drive or an outboard or a, a, a um, an inboard. Here's what I will tell you to pay attention to. As you're looking for the power source that's on the used boat you're looking at, ensure that there's a technician that specializes in that motor type near you that can be your go-to tech source because all of these engines, especially the newer ones, are so high on technology that to do any diagnostic work, they need a computer. And each of them have their own computer and software uh, to uh, figure out what's wrong with the engine, how it's performing, um, and, and what uh, the issue may be. So if you want to look at a Honda, make sure that there's a Honda mechanic near you that you can start a relationship with and be your boat person if you need it. Uh, if you want a Yamaha or a Mercury, um, go with those. Suzuki, those are all four stroke. Um, the Evinrude, the Evinrude E-Tech engines are two stroke engines, which means that you have to put some extra oil in um, that mixes with the gas and the two stroke, a little bit simpler engine, but most of the marketplace is going to four stroke. Evinrude makes a great engine. Um, it gives you a little extra torque um, out of the hole. It's going to be a little quicker. Um, they've come a they've come a long way over the years. Uh, but no matter what outboard you get, even if it's an older one that's not listed here, um, other than the Force engines, if you see a Force, I would I would tend to stay away from those uh, because they are known to have uh, have issues. Um, make sure that you have an outboard mechanic that will work on that type of, of engine and has the technology, the tools, and access to the parts for that particular outboard. Now, number of engines, you're seeing you know, everything from triple quads, quints to six. I mean, I, mean, I don't know when they're going to stop um, with the 400, 425 horsepowers. They're just loading them up on these big, huge center consoles. What's right for you is likely a single, a twin, maybe a triple, or a quad, um, here is what you want to look for, is what type of usage are you going to be using with this boat? Are you going to go offshore? Then maybe you want the redundancy of a twin engine. Um, but most of the engines today, and I'm, I'm speaking about newer engines, they're so reliable, um, they are rock solid, and a single engine is going to allow you to go offshore fishing as long as you take the proper precautions. Um, having the twin is great. Just remember that the cost of ownership, the cost of usage, cost of maintenance uh, goes up. Same thing as you as you continue to add outboards there. But get the right setup for the size boat you have and the type of usage you're doing and the speeds that you want to reach. Okay. More importantly than the number of engines, obviously you want to get it for the right, right horsepower, the right number of engines for the style of boat, but the dead rise and the ride quality. I want to talk about dead rise just for a second so you understand um, the dead rise is the angle of the bottom of the boat, that V-haul shape 
on the bottom of the boat. You can see the dead rise um, on the top image, the flat bottom on the bottom image. So the bottom image would have almost a zero dead rise, um, which means that that boat is very, very stable. That boat is going to get into very skinny water. You can get into the back creeks, into the to that shallow water that um, that's around some areas. What that also means is that flat bottom is going to give you a rougher ride. There's nothing to slice through the waves and the chop that you may be going through. Now, the bigger the dead rise, the easier it's going to slice through the chop. But guess what? The trade-off is the more tippy it's going to be as you're as you're sitting trying to cast from the platform, as you're sitting just at your fishing hole, um, as the waves come, it's going to rock on that dead rise haul. That's great for slicing through the chop. Um, it's going to rock and roll a little bit more than a flatter boat with less dead rise. You can see this example. Um, not only is there a dead rise, but there's a dead rise. There's a different angle at different points on the boat. Typically, as you start in the bow, the angle is going to be steeper. It's going to have more slice through the water in the in the um, front of the boat, and then it's going to it's going to flatten out out a little bit towards the transom. That 24 inch dead rise, that 24 inch is going to be you know a, an offshore type boat. That I I took this directly from a 28 um, a 28 regulator. Uh, that 24 inch dead rise at the transom. When you look in the brochure, when you look at the specs, that number that they give you is the transom dead rise. They typically don't give you the forward and the bow dead rise um, on boats. But what you want to look for is where are you going to use the boat? How are you going to run it? If you're going to fish it, how are you going to fish it? And what's more important, smooth ride, steady platform to fish from. Smooth ride, steady platform to fish one. Those are your trade-offs as you're looking at dead rise and ride quality. If you don't know the dead rise of a boat, um, you can measure it up with the with an angle, um, or you can usually go online and find those um, find those specs options. Now, I'm not talking about all the little options and where you put in the bait well and that. I'm talking about options that if you don't add them to the if, if they're not on the boat when you buy it that they can be an expensive addition to get what you want. Starting with electronics. Electronics, if you if you have a Simrad or a, a Garmin um, or a Raymarine, whatever you may have on that boat, if you're going to upgrade the electronics or they need to be upgraded for some reason, understand that that's probably going to be a thousand plus dollars of investment with the, the electronics themselves, with the cords, uh, with all of the cabling needs that you'll have, the transducers and all of that. Um, if you can find a boat that has an electronics package that you like, uh, that's doable for you, um, that means that's money that you don't have to spend. If you buy a boat that doesn't have the electronics or the electronics need to be replaced, remember as you're comparing it to other boats, um, understand that there's going to be an expense associated with that. Um, so you're comparing apples to apples. The fishing platforms. Again, I always, when we're talking about boats in my first time boat buyer videos, we talk about what are you doing? If you've come to the center console video, I'm going to make the assumption you're doing some fishing. So what's your fishing platforms look like? Where do the casting platforms sit? Do you have good room? Is there is there plenty of space? Are you going to have a, a good platform to fish from? Um, and that's going to vary model to model manufacturer to manufacturer year to year um, so when you're when you're looking at doing a lot of fishing on your center console i want you to to test out the areas that you're going to be fishing and, and make sure that the setup is conducive to your style um, and, and the way you like to to uh, be positioned and it's going to be comfortable and effective and practical the comfort packages if you're using your center console to do some wakeboarding and some some water sports or to cruise to the restaurant and you're going to have the family on the boat some of the times, you might want to consider the comfort packages, which are basically cushioned packages that allow you to change the casting platforms, the fishing platform um, into a comfortable seat. Some of them have removable backrests that you pull out when you're fishing the boat, you put them in as you are um, pleasure boating with the family or, or entertaining guests or clients. Um, 
you want to consider those things because if you are doing that pleasure style boating, you want to probably have some more comfortable seating for, for your family and your guests. And again, that can be an expensive add-on or not even an option to, um, uh, to put on unless you custom make some, some uh, cushions. The head compartment, uh, porta potty or toilet uh, is what the head is in, in boat speak. Um, if you are needing a head and it doesn't have one, uh, understand that sometimes uh, it can be difficult to get a to get a porta potty in, depending on the size of the of the compartment under that center console. Um, you certainly, if it doesn't come with it from the factory, uh, getting a, a vacuum flush um, head system in there is going to be very very expensive, uh, potentially impossible to do. So if that's important, make sure that the boat has it on there, um, and uh, and it's already there. A ski tow bar. If you are going to be using your center console uh, to do some wakeboarding, to do some inner tubing, to do some uh, water skiing and other wake um, sports, water sports, uh, you likely will want a center console a ski tow bar that goes over your motor mounts, um, your outboard engine, so that that rope isn't getting caught up on the motor. Uh, it's safer, it's easier, and um, it, that's for most boats, that's going to be a $500 to a $1,500 option, uh, depending on the quality of the tow bar, the size of the boat and the tow bar, and um, the, the exact one you get. Uh, but remember, if you're comparing two boats, one has a tow bar, one doesn't, um, you know, that could be a, a big chunk to compare the difference that um, plus the installation may be problematic, depending on the type of boat that you're looking at. Can you find one that fits? Can you find one that's going to mount properly? Can you find one that has the mounting brackets in the right position so it, it doesn't crack the fiberglass over time and cause damage to the boat? Um, so I always I always prefer factory installed wakeboard towers and ski tow bars, uh, but you just want to ask those questions. Maybe ask the dealer that carries that brand of boat um, if they know which is the right ski tow bar to put on. Can they order it for you and can they help you do that? Trim tabs. Um, on most center consoles, over 23 or so feet, 22, 23, 24 feet, um, you're probably going to want to have trim tabs, especially if you're running offshore, uh, especially if you're you're cruising uh, up and down the intercoastal waterway. Uh, as winds and currents are hitting you, those trim tabs are very helpful as the the um, gear, the load on your boat. Um, it is, is not dispersed exactly how you want it for a, a nice level ride. Those trim tabs can be very valuable, make your run more efficient, make your run smoother. Um, and, and it's something that you probably will want to get. Um, and again, a, a fairly significant expense to have trim tabs added to a boat, although, although very doable, um, just remember that expense and it's going to vary by boat. So, um, you want to, you want to check on that if, uh, trim tabs are, are something that, will make your boating lifestyle more enjoyable, okay? So as we get to inspecting the boat, obviously you're looking at a used boat. Here's something I tell everybody when they're looking at used boats is every used boat has an issue. There's a flaw or flaws somewhere. I don't care if the boat has two hours on it or if it's 20 years old. Um, here's what I encourage you to do is find every flaw know every flaw on that boat and you decide for the price that you can buy that boat, is it worth it to you? Um, with the repairs, with the, the annoyance, with just knowing that ding or scratch or, or issue is there, with the way you're going to use the boat, with your budget, with the way you want to own that boat, are you happy with the condition of the boat and the flaws that you found um, and the price that you're going to pay for it? So that starts with doing a complete inspection. Start with the fiberglass. Obviously, you're going to notice most of the nicks and scratches and, uh, and issues on the gel coat on the exterior. But don't forget the bottom of the boat, especially if the boat was kept in the water um, for periods of time, uh, that there's no um, uh, bubbles or there's, there's no um, blisters on the bottom of the boat. Uh, you'll want to double check those things. That means that you may have to crawl under it. If it's on a trailer, if it's on the water, make sure you pull that and never buy a boat um, without having it out of the water where you can look at the 
at the, the drive of the engine as well as the bottom of the boat. Electronics and stereo system. We just mentioned that it's, it can be costly to replace electronics um, and, and stereo equipment. So you want to test everything. Does it work? Is it working properly? Lights, gauges, switches, live wells, bait wells, fish boxes. Test all of those things. Some of them may need to be tested in the water, but make sure you run through every system. One, it's going to help you when you do own the boat. You're going to know how everything operates, where all the valves are, where all the switches are, where the fuses are. You're going to know all that stuff, and you're also going to know if it works properly, how it works, and, um, and you're going to get some good inside information on that particular boat. Hatches, latches, um, open every compartment, open every latch, every door, um, and, and make sure does, does the um, hinges work right? Are the latches latching properly? Are there some repairs that will need to be made or, or something that will be a minor annoyance that you're fine dealing with? Um, but know everything. Look in the lockers. Are there mold, mildew? Is there is there some sort of issue under the surface? And that's where most issues are: is under the surface um, of that of that nice shiny gel coat um, that you need to know about. That means look in the fish locker, feel up under, uh, look in the storage compartments, look in the um, the in floor locker, uh, poke your head in that center console compartment. Um, wiring corrosion while you're in that center console compartment make sure that you're checking the wiring and the corrosion checking the batteries and the battery switches for corrosion uh, checking the um, cabling on the on the transom looking for any corrosion um, that may cause you an issue uh, cost you money um, in the very new future and then another thing on center consoles you want to check the drainage of the cockpit again you'll probably want to do this when you do your on water demo uh, or sea trial or, or test drive, whatever you want to call it, and make sure make sure that if water gets in the boat, that it drains out properly when it's sitting floating. Um, some of the some of the boats have had a history of of sitting low in the water, and the sculpers will will let water in potentially if they don't have a, a backflow valve on them. Um, you'll want to know if you take a big wave over the over the top, you want to know that that's going to flow out properly. And, uh, and not be an annoyance as you, uh, as you own that boat. Moving on to the engine. The engine is a significant portion, obviously, of the, the price of the boat, the value of the boat, especially if you're looking at twins and trips. So you want to know what the engine hours are on each engine. Um, on a, a saltwater um, center console boat that they're running fishing, you know, 100 hours a year um, is, is certainly um, common. Uh, so you want to you want to see, hey, based on how old this boat is, what's the usage look like? Has it been used a ton? Um, and uh, and if so, how is it maintained? But you want to know what those engine hours are. Just as bad as a as an engine that has 1,500 hours, uh, which is about the useful life of most outboards, um, where you're going to start having major issues, rebuilds, repowers uh, that are coming up, is too low of hours. I would be just as concerned about a boat that's 10 years old that has 50 hours on it uh, as I would with a, a boat that's five years old and has a thousand hours on it. Um, it's it's indicative. Mechanical things need to be used and, and the more regularly they're used, um, the better they work. If it sits and they're not used, things tease to, to seize up, rust up, corrode up, um, and, and not work properly. So know what the engine hours are, the oil and fluids. Um, you want to check those, make sure they're good levels, um, make sure that they're not kind of frothy and foamy. That's indicative that water's getting in somewhere. And that's a major costly expense, a huge red flag. Um, compression. This is the one thing that you have to check on every engine is the compression of every cylinder. Basically, it's how strong that engine fires, um, how, how much power each cylinder is putting out. Um, there is a, a spec that the engine should be putting out this amount of pressure uh, as new, and you want to make sure that it's within those, those lines. The other thing you want to make sure is that all of the cylinders are on a, a level playing field, right? So that one's not higher or lower than the others. Uh, which which is indicative of maybe a, a, a major issue or a major fault 
uh, a bad cylinder, uh, which uh, is, is going to cause issues with power, um, and it's probably um, going to be a, a replacement for that engine uh, or, or sleeve that cylinder, a costly repair in, in one way or another. Um, but you can do that yourself if you have a, a compression gauge. Um, a marine technician, uh, typically for 100 150 bucks, you can have them do that um, that test and that compression test for 150 bucks on a $5,000 boat, $10,000 boat is going to keep you from making a huge mistake. If you're looking at a 50 or $100,000 boat, it's a drop in the bucket. Get that compression test done. Don't get caught off guard. I've seen boats that are only a couple years old have compression issues um, because of something mechanical that happened, maintenance that wasn't done properly, uh, the way the boat was run. You would never know it looking at it. The boat looks great in every other way. The only way you're going to find out is doing that compression check. Um, the prop condition. Are there any props that are going to need to be rebuilt that have major dings and dents or bends in it? Um, and the fuel water separator. Uh, does that need to be replaced? Does it does it look like it's all corroded and, and rusty and nasty? Um, or, or does it look like it's in, in good condition uh, and, and that's going to gonna last you a, a long time? So those are the engines. Now, let's move to the test drive. As you're looking at test driving a boat, I'm going to throw this caveat out. Make sure that you're safe. Make sure that you're competent to do all these maneuvers, that the conditions are safe to do them in. If you're not able, get somebody that is able. Um, but um, if you can, do a cold start. With Be the first one to start that engine for the day. That's going to tell you how does it fire up cold. Not that it's been warmed up. They've done all the, the little things they need to to get it to fire off right. Um, but start it cold if possible. Just let it sit in idle for a couple minutes. How does it sound? Does it sound smooth or does it sound rough and kind of rattly? Um, once you take it off the dock, uh, go through the no wake, get out to open water, uh, you're going to want to go from idle to wide open throttle. How does the boat get up on plane? How does it perform? Um, how does it sound as it's doing that? Does it hesitate or does it jump right out of the water like it's supposed to? Um, just listen and feel in that idle to wide open throttle. Again, be safe. Pay attention. Run through some chop. If the if the, it's a nice, smooth day, kind of create some chop yourself and cut through it. Is it a wet ride or is it a dry ride? Are you going to be um, running out to your fishing hole and getting splashed with spray nonstop? Or does the hole kind of bat it down a little bit? Um, depending on depending on the type of usage and how you're going to use it, where you're going to use it, that may or may not be important to you, but you should know, um, is it, is, does it have dry characteristics or is it more of a wet ride? Um, so now you're at full throttle. I want you to come back to three quarters throttle and, and do a, a turn to, to port to the left side, to starboard the right side. Do a nice full complete turn. How does it turn? How does it handle? Does the boat ride properly? Does it feel good in that turn? Does it feel safe? Does it feel sound and, and tight in that turn? Is it holding the edges on the on the chines? All of that stuff, you want to know what those ride characteristics are uh, of that boat. Uh, if it has trim, you want to adjust the trim. If it has a, um, a jack plate, you want to adjust those jack plates. And again, this is where inside intelligence from the owner can be valuable. Find out what the right settings are in that jack plate and the trim for optimal performance and fuel efficiency um, in different conditions. They're going to likely know this type of information, and that's going to help you um, get started and have more fun right away. The other thing is you can tell, is it working properly? Do they, does it take the right amount of trim? Do the jack plates work, or is everything running? Once you've gone through these maneuvers, you should come back to idle, and what you're going to do is just go in forward gear, Pause for a beat, one, two, three, back to neutral. Pause for a beat, one, two, three, reverse. Pause for a beat, back to neutral. Just go forward, neutral, reverse a handful of times. How is it shifting? Does it sound smooth? Is there clunking? Is there something that doesn't seem off? Does the throttle not move properly? Um, check. You're checking all of those things, the cabling, uh, the shifting mechanism. You're checking to make sure all that feels right, sounds right. Okay. 
And then you're also going to want to look on each of the engines, you, um, the outboard, you're going to look for that little stream of water spitting out. Um, that's going to be indicative that the impeller is in good shape and you're getting good water flow through um, at idle. It may just be a kind of a little dribble uh, as you're going. It should be it should be a nice steady stream uh, of water coming out that uh, that little pee hole there. Um, a recommendation as you go into buying your boat, you want to ask the question of when's the last time the maintenance has been done? That means um, fluid changes, impeller change. And batteries. Uh, how old are the batteries? How old is the impeller? When's the last time the fluid's been changed? And I'm going to tell you if it's if it's over a year or if they don't know, just plan on having those services done. You're going to be much happier investing the money and taking that into consideration when you buy the boat that we're going to put $500 in for maintenance so that we start fresh. We know exactly what we're getting and we've got a good impeller. We're not going to be left stranded with an overheated engine and cause some major issues, um, which is, which is, um, you know, can happen. You overheat it. That's how compression goes. That's how a cylinder gets blown. That's how major costly expenses come up. And if you go out, you're new to the boat, you're learning it and you don't catch that, man, that's an expensive and, and that's a, a major headache. So, um, get those things done. Oil fluid changes, um, get those done as well. If they haven't been done recently, um, and that, um, if you have a trailer, if you have a trailer, you want to make sure you inspect the trailer. A great time to do that is during the test drive is the boats off the trailer, tie it up at the dock, check the winch stand, check the lights, the bunks, the axles and the bearings, um, the tires, you're looking for corrosion and rust. You're looking for bunks that are rotten. You're looking for tires that have dry rot or, or low tread or uneven wear brakes that are worn down. Um, and you do all that while it's off the trailer where you can see everything very, very well. Trailers are likely more expensive than what you would imagine. For an 18-foot boat, uh, you may be looking at a, a single axle if it fits, um, and you know you may be looking at uh, $1,700 to $2,000. Uh, if you're looking at a, a 23, 24-foot boat, you know you might be into the uh, five to $7,000 range uh, for a proper trailer. And finding a used trailer that's going to fit the boat you're looking at, if the boat doesn't have a trailer, you're probably going to have to buy a new trailer uh, because finding a used trailer that's going to fit your boat, that's going to have the right bunk set up, uh, that's going to have, be in, in good condition, um, it, it's very difficult to find that. If you are in that situation, call the manufacturer, uh, the dealer that represents that manufacturer in your area. Tell them what boat you're looking at, and if, if somebody's going to have a trailer, that might be the needle in the haystack, the best place to look, uh, and they might come through for you with a little bit cheaper trailer. But typically, it's not you can just pick up a $500, or $500 trailer um, to fit under your boat. It's typically much more difficult than that. Um, so comparing a boat with a trailer to a boat without a trailer, if that trailer's in good shape, there's a tremendous value in there. Okay? Financing um, on used boats, local and national banks. I, I've got a video on this that you might want to check out at BoatBuyerSecretWeapon.com um, called uh, Boat Loan Basics, what you need to know, know about boat loans. National banks, local banks tend not to be very good at used boat financing. Local credit unions, on the other hand, tend to be very good for a lot of people. They lend more on relationship um, and, and they are great to use. Um, Marine lenders, uh, we have some marine lenders at BoatBuyerSecretWeapon.com where you can get a, a free pre-qualification, a pre-approval. Um, they know boats. They're typically um, going to have the best overall package, which means rate, term, down payment. Um, they're going to have the best options there, and, um, and you, can, you can check those out. And then if you're buying from a dealer, I encourage you to check with your dealership's lender. The reason for that is, yes, they're likely going to make money on your boat loan. They're likely going to make money, but so is everybody. Nobody's doing a loan for you for free, for charity. They're making money. What I want you to do is, is get an option from a credit union, from a marine lender, and from a dealership's lender, if you're buying from a dealer, and compare them and choose the one that works best for you. Again, watch that financing episode. Um, you'll, you'll get a lot of value if you're looking at, uh, at financing your boat. 
an insurance for a center console, you're looking on the very, very inexpensive end for maybe a small bay boat, $500 to $2,000 a year. Um, as you start adding more and more engines on, more and more speed, if you're more, if you're in hurricane areas, um, that that number may go up. Um, but uh, 500 to 2,000 is a pretty good ballpark. You can get a free insurance quote at BoatBuyerSecretWeapon.com. Uh, down below this video, you can probably uh, click a button and uh, and get an insurance quote that um, uh, compare compare that to the other options you have. There's also a boat insurance um, boat insurance basics video that you can check out if you want to get the best coverage uh, for the cheapest uh, rate. You can do that at Boat Buyer Secret Weapon as well. And thank you for staying to the end. I know this information. I've thrown a lot at you, but it's going to help you buy the right boat, avoid somebody else's headache, um, to make sure that you're doing the demo the right way. We've got uh, what we call a Boat Buyer Secret Weapon Toolkit. The Boat Buyer's Toolkit, it's going to give you checklists, how to buy a boat at the best price, how to demo a boat the right way. Uh, must ask questions for boat dealers and private sellers. Ask those questions that that are gonna. The answer is gonna give you more insight on how this boat was taken care of. If there's issues, um, thing things that will raise red flags. If you have a trade, how to maximize your trade value, how to get the best boat loan, how to get the best boat insurance, and much more. There's also an opportunity um, to get uh, a, a method that's gonna ensure you get the best price on your used boat. Um, you're, you're definitely going to save hundreds of dollars, likely thousands of dollars, and maybe even tens of thousands of dollars, depending on the type of boat that you're looking at. And when you go to BoatBuyerSecretWeapon.com and you get the, the um, Boat Buyers Toolkit, uh, you'll learn more about that as well. Um, thank you for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up on YouTube. Make a comment down below if you've got a question, if something pops into your mind. Uh, put your questions down there. Uh, I will answer it. I may even create a complete video around it and um, and continue sharing that information um, so that you're getting that unbiased information that's going to help you make a smart decision uh, when you're buying a boat um, as well as um, subscribe. If you like it, subscribe. We're always putting out new content and we will be uh, putting out content for boat owners as well uh, over time. And um, subscribe so you can get access to all of that uh, great information. Thank you very much. And remember, life truly is better on a boat. Take care, everybody.